Hello everyone, in this video I want to show you how a Yupana or Incan Abacus works. First, some quick background information. The Yupana stems from the Inca civilization. They lived in an area that reached from modern day Ecuador down to Chile in the 15th and 16th century and amassed around 12 million people at their peak. They constructed a very extensive system of roads and bridges and had a very sophisticated economic system including an elaborate system for taxes. What makes all this very special is the fact that they managed to do all this without any written language. Instead, they made all the necessary computations with the Yupana and then stored the acquired information on the Kwipu. The Kwipu is a number of chords hung from a bigger main chord. Specific kinds of knots at specific spots in these chords were used to represent numerical values. But, since these knots were not very easy to tie and untie, it was only used as a permanent storage device. For all other purposes, the Inca used the Yupana. How exactly the Yupana was operated back then still is a mystery today. Obviously, the Inca didn't write anything about it down, and the Spanish conquistadors, who did create some records on the Inca, were not mathematically proficient enough to be able to accurately describe what the Inca mathematicians were doing. Thus, there have been many different interpretations of how the Yupana was operated. The one I will be basing all this on is the one proposed by M. Leonard and C. Shakiban, published in the Journal of Mathematics and Culture in 2010. I will provide a link to it in the description in case you want to look at it. So, here you can see the Yupana I made. I used a tabletop milling machine and table saw to create it but it can be done in much simpler ways. It will already be enough to have a wood board with just some drawing on it or even just a piece of paper with the appropriate markings. So basically Yupana is a tablet made of wood or stone that has compartments and grooves in it. This example has four columns and five rows, although the number of rows is flexible and um, can be extended to enable the calculation with higher numbers. To display numbers on the Yupana, the Inca used pebbles or corn kernels, but you can get quite creative in what you use. As um, and I will be using some uh, just clothing buttons to do all this. But you can, for example, also use little marbles or basically anything else of an appropriate size. So let's first have a look at how the basic display of numbers works. As you can see, in the compartment has one two, three or five grooves. They are arranged in decreasing order from left to right. And so the compartments in the first column all have five groups, the compartments in the second column all have three and so on. That gives 11 grooves per row in total. According to Leonard's and Shikiban's interpretation of the Yupana, the rows each represent a power of 10. So the first row represents ones, the second represents tens, then we have hundreds, thousands and ten thousands. Um, but of course you can also very easily make your partner with additional rows so you can continue calculating in the hundred thousands, millions or even further if you want to. And the Inca needed a tool for high numbers like this due to the sheer size of their empire and especially the population. As I said in the beginning, at their largest they encompass around 12 million people. Imagine most of them have upwards of 20 cows, sheep or llamas. And you as the emperor would want to know the total number of livestock in the empire. Good luck trying to tally that up with a regular abacus. One thing I would like to mention here is the special purpose of the compartment with only one singular groove in it. It serves as temporary storage for 10 of whatever row you're on before the pebble kernel button or whatever else you're using is moved up to the next row. That makes our job as the user a lot easier because we won't have to remember all this number all by ourselves. I will show how this works later on when I get to the calculation. Of course the Yupana can be used to perform all four types of standard calculation. As you would expect, addition is the easiest and most straightforward. When adding two numbers, you place one cement on the Yupana and the other cement to the right of it. Then you transfer all the pebbles, kernels or buttons, I will refer to buttons from now on to make it easier. So we um, transfer all those from the outside onto the board. You can go either from bottom to top or top to bottom. 
Due to the way calculating is done in the Yupana, I would recommend going from bottom to top. If a row is filled, you empty it and only keep one button in the rightmost compartment until the next step when you move it to the next row above. And then continue that until all the buttons are on the board. Then you can see the result of the calculation displayed. And if there are more semans, just keep adding them up. I will use the examples from the paper I mentioned earlier. The addition problem they use is 409 plus 107. So let's begin by placing 409 on the board and 107 to the right of it in the appropriate spots. And then um, you just start transferring them to the board. So I will start here on the bottom and now you can already see we've run into a problem. This row is full, so take one more button, put it here to remember there are 10 and then we clear all these out. And put this here in this row and then we can add all the other ones up. And then this one is also easy. So now we have our result which is 516. As you might already be able to guess, subtraction is pretty much the same process in reverse. The larger number is placed on the board, while the smaller one is placed to the right of it. And then buttons are removed from the board and placed to the left until there's the same amount of buttons on either side of the board. And then the buttons that are left on the board show you the result. Our example for this is 715 minus 260. The first step is identical to addition. We place the larger number on the board and the smaller one to the right. So here we have it. And then, um, as I just said, we start removing buttons from the board until we have the same amount here and here. So, and here we already have a problem. We have to subtract six, but we only have one here. So, we subtract this one. We take this 100, put it into the single group in here, the temporary storage, and then we fill the row up. And then we can remove this additional one and then easily subtract the other five we need. And then we just subtract these two more from up here from the hundreds. And voila, we are done. We have 260 here, 260 here. On the board we have our result, which is 455. Of course, multiplication and division are much more complicated, but they are still very much doable. The compartmentalization into one, two, three and five really comes in handy here. When performing multiplication, your first step is to determine the multiples with these four numbers of the larger factor. Times 1 is of course very simple and all the other ones can easily be calculated without aid through repeated addition. For this one I will skip the explanation and jump straight into the example, that way it will be much easier to understand. The example that Leonard and Shakiban used in their paper is 153 times 47, which uh, has been chosen for ease of use. I will use it as well, but of course this will also work for any other multiplication. So as I just said, we begin by calculating the multiples of 153 with 1, 2, 3 and 5. So and these are 153 times 1 equals 153, 153 times 2 which is 306, 153 times 3 which is 459 and 153 times 5 which is 765, which can all be done pretty easily. Then we break the second factor up into 1, 2, 3 and 5 or their multiples with 10, 100, etc. In the case of this example we get 47 equals 30 plus 10 plus 5 plus 2. Now we can begin the actual calculation. We go through the factor semans one by one. The order doesn't really matter, but for ease of use it is best to go from the biggest to the smallest. So the first one would be 153 times 30. We already calculated 153 times 3 equals 159, 
We already calculated 153 times 3 equals 459 in the preparation, so we can just multiply that by 10, which gives us 4590. We then place that number to the right of the Yupana and 30 to the left to signify that this factor cement has been taken into account. So, and then we transfer that to the board. Then the next cement uh, is 10, so 153 times 10 should be pretty easy to figure out, 1530. So next we place 1530 to the right of the board and add 10 on the left side. And then just as before, we transfer that onto the board. The next smallest factor is 5, so 153 times 5 equals 765. So once again we start by putting it to the right and then we put the factor 5 to the left and then we put the 765 on the board. So here we have the 765 and so the, of course the next step is to put it onto the board. And now the last operation uh, is the factor 2. So this means 153 times 2, 306. So we place 306 to the right. So here we have it, and I also added the 2 to um, speak for the factor that has been taken into account. And then of course we transfer that onto the board. And now voila, we have our factor 47 to the left of the board, and here we have our result, which is 7191. 7, As is the case with addition and subtraction, division is mostly the reverse process of multiplication. The example used by Lennon and Shakiban is 7191 divided by 153, which of course is the reverse of the previous calculation. The first step for computing a division calculation is the same as for multiplication. Finding the multiples of the divisor, in this case 153, with 1, 2, 3 and 5. Then the dividend is placed on the Yupana, which I've already done here. What comes next is very reminiscent of the written algorithm for division. We work from top to bottom to see which multiple of 153 fits into the number we are looking at. So starting at the top row we have 7, so whatever row we're at we regard that at the start of the 1's row. So if we start here we have 7, which is of course way too small for any of the multiples. Then including the second row we get 71, which is still too small. With 3 rows we land at 719. The largest of the multiples to fit into that number is 153 is 459, so 153 times 3. So we remove 459 buttons from the board and place them to the left, and place 3 buttons to the right of the Yupana in the tens row to signify that the factor 3 has been taken into account. So here it is, we have the 459 here, and then next we're going to clear all that out just to make it a bit more easier and not as confusing as it usually would be. So here we have it, we have the 3 right here and then here we have 260 left, remember we're still ignoring this one. So we have 260 here and of course what fits into this is 153 which is 153 times 1. So next up is to add 1 here and remove 153 from here. Here we have it. And now, if we still ignore this one, we have 107 left. But this is of course too small to fit any of them. So now we also have to include the ones row, which gives us 1071. The largest, um, the largest of the summands which works here is 765, 153 times 5. So we remove this number from the ward and place 5 to the right. So here we have it, we have the 765 here and we have the 5 added over here. And so as you can see we have 306 left which perfectly corresponds with 153 times 2. So now we remove these and place 2 more on the right here. So it is done, we have 306 right here. And here we have our result, which is 47. So, those are the four types of calculations with a Yupana. That was a short explanation of how to use a Yupana. 
If you would like to get some more information on it, you can check out the paper where I got most of this information from. It is linked in the description. I hope I could give you a useful insight into the mathematics of the Inca. Goodbye!